Hi everyone. Welcome to this recent vlog. I'm in Sammy's room, so you'll hear her in the background. She's popping bubble wrap as I'm speaking, so those are the sounds that you hear in the background. So something remarkable happened yesterday. Um, it was a pretty big event, I felt like, and I wanted to be able to share that with more people out there since it can affect the functioning of uh, our artists in their current state. So it might be disruptive to them. And I wanted to give as many people as I could a heads up. Um, you know, there's still a lot of unknowns about this since this is all very new, what's happening. So uh, I'll do my best to try and describe and explain what... Uh, I've been experiencing or what I what I saw happening. So Sammy's been on a um, embodiment process over the last couple of years. I felt her at different stages and I would do these different drawings of her blossoming and blooming. I would draw butterflies, different kinds of butterflies and flowers in different stages. Um, and she's uh, really starting to land in her in her body now uh but something amazing happened yesterday that i think is going to affect many more of the autists uh on the planet so you know autism is a kind of a diagnosis based on symptoms so i don't know if this affects everyone on the planet that is diagnosed with autism that I don't I just don't know that but I do know um that Samantha and many of her other uh, brothers and sisters here who are um let's say uh, beyond verbal or limited verbal as we would call them uh, are probably in this uh category now some of the autistics I you know it's my understanding they that they embodied already, uh, uh, but this is I don't so I don't know if those individuals that are already embodied, what happens. Um, again, I'll just describe my vision of what I saw happening, uh, starting with something that uh, kind of floored me yesterday. I had uh, there was something coming in all morning yesterday. I could tell that when Sammy is. Uh, kind of um, dysregulated and you know so I was doing a lot of toning and uh, using light language for a while and then I finally um, saw something coming in uh, that really hit me and it's something called I saw the words in my mind black matter solar reshik sun so uh, you know usually I see with dark matter I usually see something with about dark matter and those kinds of things but this was very specific about black matter and uh reshik usually means to me now that it it's way deep in the cosmos close to the um let's say the original formless state of source the the, the pure field of uh potential let's say so um, like beyond my, the words that I would use right now is beyond the 36th dimension, so to speak. Uh, it looks like the 37th dimension is the anchor point, And then, um, kind of this, uh, radiating pulse or emanation. And, uh, it hit me hard in a sense, um, so I went to uh, start drawing it. So I had a beginning of a drawing and uh, and it really knocked me out. I had to lay down for a couple of, uh, for, a, for a bit because it was really uh, uh, kind of dizzy. So anyway, when, um, it, well, this is the, the sun that I ended up drawing, finishing up today. Um, so it was a pretty powerful force so to speak and uh, so while I was laying down 
I just started having visions uh, with the sun and really coming into my uh, uh, brain stem. So uh, when that happens, then you know you can get kind of nauseous and, and dizzy as well, because uh, your brain stem is the area where a lot of your uh, those autonomic functions are, um, like that controls digestion and things like that. So um, it made me. It made me dizzy and, and and nauseous. So, but while I was laying down, I was having started having visions of um, like Sam and the autists, uh, others on the planet, just just randomly around the planet. And um, I was shown that their horror line was removed, and then a new horror line uh, came in and replaced uh, the old one. So the Hara line, you know, that central vertical channel is uh, where, you know, uh, the spiritual life force current comes through and um, basically like ignites the body to, to come alive. So um, it's as if from what I have experienced with Samantha, uh, particularly the last couple of weeks, where it's becoming and started to become more apparent that she was embodied. Um, we had to remove like the spirit that was keeping her alive, right? This that body functioning, even though they're not necessarily connected to their fully connected to their bodies, there has that life force has to be there in order for that body to be uh, alive, and so. We removed that, and then, um, like, from further out in the cosmos, let's say, the uh, spiritual essence or the breath came uh, came in, uh, came in, and down her central vertical channel. So, the uh, so with the other autists on the planet, that what I was seeing was that uh, that horror line was removed, or that spirit. Um, that kept their body functioning, and this uh, sun, this Rishik sun, um, brought in, uh, started connecting a new horror line into the bodies. I'm not even sure if that's the right terminology, but that's what uh, that's what I, that's that's what I saw. Um, and uh, definitely a feeling that um, more we're going to embody as I was seeing different uh, individuals, more like light kind of bodies, like light forms around the planet um, that this was happening to. So uh, I just knew from the energy of what was happening that... Uh, more are going to start to embody, but um, if this collective consciousness of these autists were kind of functioning in uh, another dimensional realm, then what I was seeing from this new horror line was that the sun was uh, is is making them uh, a collective but on the planet so functioning um, receiving transmissions from this sun uh, when they embody and then they will be acting as a collective consciousness on the, the planet and Sammy's over here you can just you can just see her she's smiling and um, she's uh, uh, giving her affirmation for what I'm saying here. So um, they're going to start vibrating like a collective consciousness in the physical. So now even though they have been in, you know, kind of on the planet as uh, their their individual bodies, um, they really haven't been operating as a collective the way they do in the higher dimensional realm. So uh, this means that they're going to um, be vibrating uh, information 
and uh, uh, the word that's coming is codes of consciousness from this uh, from this sun, in a sense. Um, now, interestingly, last week or a couple of weeks ago, there were a couple of moms and I, we had gotten together to um, look at um, embodiment, uh, just kind of in general. And uh, we were shown that when these uh, autists embody, their third eye will actually be uh, vibrating a different uh, consciousness. So each of them have will have a different kind of sapphire in their third eye. Uh, and um, it was very specific that it's a sapphire, um, uh, but of different colors. So some of them may have a gold one, a blue sapphire, some of them like an aquamarine, uh, some like a peach color, some like a salmon coral kind of color. So there was lots of different, um, or in soft pinks I'm seeing right now, and uh, like a soft um, kind of lavender to a darker purple kind of color. So this is what we uh, started to see. And it looks like then these uh, sapphires from their third eye is going to start affecting others around them. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide because I know it can be intense and that may uh, kind of interrupt your uh, experience here as I'm talking. Um, so that third eye is going to radiate to people on the planet, others around them, and the third eye, uh, you know, is about perception, right? Not, But not just perception about the outer world, but perception about your uh, inner world, you know, your inner connection to uh, the God source, you know, so... Sammy's saying, I can feel her saying, like, that, the, that inner eye, as um, we can imagine, the inner, that inner eye uh, connected to the heart, the soul, now is going to start to uh, have, people are going to start to have a different perception about themselves, damn, damn. you know, the inner world, the inner experience, the inner uh, uh, body senses, because the entire body from uh, Sam's and other autist perspective, the entire body is like a sensory system. You know, they, they, uh, their sensory system is more sensitive and enhanced uh, for for a reason. So it gives us information from the God source, but it also gives us information from um, our inner state, meaning from even the outside world, that information that's coming through our sensory system from the outer world gets processed uh, in the body. And it's this um, heart and also uh, pineal or third eye connection uh, that's going to enable us to more people to change their perception. Now, if we think about what the diagnosis of autism is, it's it's described that way because they seem to be in their own world, in their inner world, and don't seem to uh, quote care about what's going on around them, or are or are unaware of what's going on uh, in the outer world. But if we flip that around, in the sense of how most humans have been functioning in a three D platform, um we can imagine that it's sort of 
uh, the opposite, right? The 3D realm, as you focus on the outside world, outside getting validation from the outer world, uh, the outer world telling you who you are, uh, the outer world telling you what your value is. Now, when we switch to this inner state, the inner knowing is that you are a God expression. So this is, in a sense, what they're bringing back to the planet because the 3D realm humans have forgotten who they really are. And now this goes, I would say, even beyond what um, even, let's say, the most spiritual people on the planet have been like. You know, it's it, this is even different, what the autists experience. Uh, you know, they can experience so much more far beyond into the cosmos than um, I would say even probably many of our... Uh, great masters that uh, walk the planet just because of the density of the planet, at, you know, at that time. So the planet is now changing density. We're on a 4D platform and it's really just starting to engage now. So, uh, which means that because of this change, they are ready to embody. They can embody because um, like people like Sam, they weren't going to embody to a, a 3D template that uh, really has not been serving humanity or the planet. Um, and so now more of them will be able to embody beyond the planet and uh, vibrate information and codes to um, the planet so you know we don't really might say that we don't really have good experience about how to operate as a collective consciousness on the planet uh, but these autists by embodying they are going to be vibrating or radiating that what that what that means uh maybe not quite what they what it looks like but what <laughs> it means to be a collective consciousness so um the other one of the most important points about this embodiment process is that we remain open to what uh this embodiment process means does it is, does it mean they're going to look like the same 3d human probably not um because they're not here to be the same 3d human so they're not going to necessarily think like we do um they're not going to adapt to uh an old 3d paradigm so um it's important to remain open about what this is going to look like, and they may not even know exactly. I asked Sam, you know, are you going to be able to talk? And she said, I don't know. Um, you know, I I don't know. Maybe she'll go back to doing RPM like we were doing before, or uh, learning to type on a on a computer or something. Maybe that's down the road. Um, one of the things that she's uh, saying, I feel from her right now is that um, this third eye activation is all also going to enable more people, them to be more tele telepathic with uh, other people, uh, the general population, you know, let's say. Uh, it might take some people a while, you know, some people never, I don't know. Many of the kids growing up, the younger kids, um, they have that natural ability for telepathy and, um, they'll probably be able to communicate with them much more uh, readily. So uh, I don't know how quickly this is going to happen. I did see some, you know, the older kids or the adults. I don't know if that means all of the adults. Uh, you know, again, I just don't know. This is all so new. I did see some young faces um i saw like elementary age uh school kids 
um, that we're going to, that this is going to, that they were going to be embodying. And again, I don't know if that's a, a few year process or if it's just in one zap. I have no idea. Like I said, Sam was going through some embodiment processes over the last couple of years. And, you know, we had to do some clearing. We had to do some healing. Um, there were just different stages. Sammy's saying it is a lot easier now because everything everything is more um, open. So uh, the other point to keep in mind then, right, is when uh, the spirit, that essence of spirit comes down the central vertical channel and it's, let's say, uh, a bigger or a different um, uh, higher spiritual essence, it uh, recalibrates the body. So your body, their bodies have to recalibrate this this spiritual uh, expanded, I don't know what the right word is, higher, expanded, um, greater consciousness of spirit that they're um, going to embody is going to uh, change their uh, physical makeup, particularly the neurological system. So um, just keep in mind that, you know, they may need more sleep. So if they used to be really active, they may not be active anymore. Their eating habits may change um, or what they want to eat may change. Um, you know, and we just, we just don't know, or it may go through phases where their taste buds change and their taste preferences change. So um, just kind of be aware of that. The other part that I want to mention um, is uh, that we're on a we're on a four D platform. I mean, it's really starting, and we're changing density. So um, to practitioners and energy workers, you know, um, you you have to look at uh, what you're doing to ground them. So if you think you're grounding them by grounding them to the earth or using their chakra system, like dense first, second, third chakras, um, uh, I, I don't recommend doing that because that uh, standard chakra system that we've known is for a denser human. And it's actually an overlay in our bodies to maintain a 3D consciousness. So the chakra cones actually kind of dissolve and they become lighter. Uh, I, I see them as more like starbursts. So if their root, if their chakras look like they're vibrating differently, then I don't recommend you trying to bring it back into that same um, frequency because that's not where they're trying to vibrate at and uh, be open to what you may be shown and use your inner guidance of what would be right. And if you open your mind and open your thoughts that what, what would be in alignment for this uh, person or this child, you may um, get new and different information. So, today, uh, uh, I had to do some, you know, realignment with Sam, with, with, with her horror line. Um, you know, I've been doing it for a while, and I even did it yesterday too, but today I could tell there was another level that needed to be done and so there was um a bit more work that i did so uh what i'm going to try to do here in the next step is a uh, a quick kind of um energy process if you want to read if you want to uh uh try it for yourself or try it on you know for your child if it feels like it would be helpful if not now at some point maybe uh, if you feel like that's what's going on, then um, you can listen to this uh, upcoming um, 
energy process that I'm about to do. I'm going to try and keep it fairly short since they're already energetically sensitive. I don't want to overwhelm them with um, more more energy. So I'm just going to use this image, which is to means to radiate balance. So take a deep breath and uh, activate a container. And it's a very, very large, expansive container. And whoever is listening to this, You can make this container as big as you want to fit your entire uh, layers of who you are, the cosmic, the avatar, the oversoul, personal soul, your physical body, light body, your auric field. come into balance. So imagine from the top of your head down to your perineum that there is a tube, like an open tubing, which is what animates the body, the breath of God. God source animates the body. And this breath is now coming through. Do not be afraid, my child. For there is great change that is upon you. You have done well and accomplished a very challenging task on the earth in service to humanity, in service to all life on the planet, in service to um, Mother Earth and all her nature spirits, the ocean life, the plants, the trees, the insects. And now, you are ready for the next phase. And I say to you that you have completed the first part of your soul mission. And now it's time for you to step into the next phase. It will be like having a rebirth, a reorganization of your body, a recalibration, a regeneration. There may be times when it is confusing when it is uncomfortable, but know that this is in service to love. And you are held, you are embraced (laughs) by the cosmos, your guides, your angelic teams, and so many others, other great beings who are applauding your great success on the planet. Some we know have had many challenges and have had su- and suffered because of it. And we see each of you all of you 
and we know what great sacrifices you made, but you also know that in the greater cosmic realms there is no sacrifice, but an inner calling that had, that had brought you to this earth during a most difficult transition. Many masters have come before you and laid seeds. And now it is time to pick up your mantle for the next phase. And you will be way showers in what you are vibrating out, what you are radiating and what you are exuding. So feel the central vertical channel, which brings you life, which offers you a deeper connection with the source of the all that is beyond words, beyond time, beyond space, beyond all cosmic realms, the I, the great I, the I, the capital I, and I, E, Y, E. So feel this breath that comes through and it will reignite your uh, eight cells in your tailbone and also other cosmic cells that are there. This breath clears those eight cells that are still there from the time that you were conceived and began cell division. This breath fills the entire pelvis and begins to move through your body, filling the body cavity, filling your organs, filling the cerebral spinal fluid, the blood, the lymphatic fluids, filling the brain and your nervous system. It will begin to fill your body, help you to adjust your density from a 3D dense form to a, a lighter state where you feel more ease in your body. Let this breath fill the legs, the feet, the toes, all the intracellular spaces and the intercellular spaces, filling the back and the front, the neck, the head, the arms and the fingers. Feel this breath, filling the bones. You are alive for a purpose. As you vibrate from your third eye, you will more efficiently communicate with other humans on the planet. And as they change their inner perception of themselves, they will also begin to see you for who you truly are. There will be those who may not understand still, 
that there will be more awakening to the true nature of the human. And as they find self-love, as their inner world expands, they will also continue to see and feel the gifts that you have to offer. So my child, please know that you are loved, that you are safe, and in these changes, will not just help you, but it will help all those around you. Close and seal this session into the light of oneness and wholeness. Holy infinite presence of God, we thank you in service to the law of one. Close and seal this session into the light of oneness and wholeness.